Hey guys, in this video we're looking at restoring some 80s guitars, the Takamon GX100 and the Takamon GX200. Sorry about the loud music, but these things want to rock. First guitar we want to look at is the Red Devil. This is a GX100 in the Explorer body style. This guitar is in reasonable condition, it's got a lot of dust and dirt on it, but there's no major issues in restoring this to its former glory. After cleaning down the guitar with lukewarm water, next we use methylated spirits to remove any oily residue. Because methylated spirits will dry out the fretboard, we need to apply fretboard conditioner after the cleaning. Apply one or two coats of oil to the fretboard and let it soak in overnight. Now to polish out the frets, I'm going to use electrical tape to protect the fretboard from damage. It's a good tip to apply the electrical tape to your shirt first to remove some of the adhesive nature of the tape. With the tape being applied to a freshly oiled fretboard, it shouldn't leave much residue on the fretboard. Tape up the sides to protect the neck. So I'm going to use three grades of steel wool, a medium, grade one, a fine, grade triple zero, and a super fine, grade quadruple zero. Start with the medium grade and work down to the super fine grade. Using a steel mask to protect the fretboard, lightly polish along the frets. To finish off the frets, we're going to use Mother's Polish. Using a rag, apply some of the polish to the fret. Then buff out the fret with a clean portion of rag. Keep polishing until no more black appears on the rag. Guitars of this vintage can be a little bit delicate. When you remove the tape, try to remove it on an angle so as to remove any possibility of removing any paint from the neck or wood from the fretboard. Once all the frets are polished, next we use methylated spirits to remove any residue from the tape. Then reapply fretboard conditioner.
Well, here's old Bluey, not looking too well. This is my first guitar bought in the late 80s. Unfortunately, about five or six years ago, the guitar fell off its stand and the head broke. Kevin at Crossroads Music in Ballarat was kind enough to re-glue the head back on for me. Amazingly, it still played great. Unfortunately, in the following years, the head snapped a further two times. So I kept my eyes open on eBay, looking for a suitable replacement. I came across a body in pretty good condition, but the guy had replaced out all the original pickups. So I stripped out the non-genuine pickups and transferred pickups from old Bluey into this new Bluey. After a good clean and restringing, new Bluey is ready to go. Put a replacement bridge on as the old saddles were worn. You can tell this is a replacement bridge because all the saddles face the same way. Goto also make a tailpiece suitable for this guitar. If you need wiring diagrams for any of the guitars go to mdtv3.wordpress.com. Using the thinnest feeler gauge you've got, here I'm using one thousandths of an inch or 0.03 millimeters. Check that your guitar's got relief. Using a straight edge over the first and last frets, run the feeler gauge under the straight edge. It should travel the whole length of the neck, stopping near the last few frets. This one's got a high spot around about the 10th fret. To adjust the neck, we need to take off the truss rod cover. You'll have to loosen two strings so you can get to the last two screws. Retune the two strings back to pitch. Insert an Allen key into the truss rod. Remember the old adage, righty tighty, loosey lefty. I'm going to loosen the tension in the truss rod, which will create a relief in the neck. Remember, only make minor adjustments to the truss rod. Keep checking the neck with a straight edge until the feeler gauge can run from just after the first fret up until the very last couple of frets. On my guitars, the maximum relief ends up being around the 6th, 7th or 8th fret at a clearance of approximately 0.2 to 0.3 millimetres. Now to set the bridge height, I use 1.4 millimetre feeler gauges on the small E and 1.9 millimetre feeler gauges on the large E. Wind down the bridge until the strings hit the feeler gauges. Now I check the gap under the first fret. I usually have about 0.4 under the small E, about 0.6 or 0.7 under the big E. You can adjust the height of the nut to get the strings at the right height over the first fret. This is my latest pickup, Black Eyes. Although it could be called Old Bourbon, due to the amount of stains and liquids on the fretboard. This thing was disgustingly dirty. I wash the whole guitar down in lukewarm water, then use methylated spirits. Because the neck was in such poor condition, I had to use super fine steel wool to clean the fretboard. So instead of individually polishing each fret, I decided to clean the fretboard and polish the frets at the same time. You have to use your fingernail to get right into the corner of the frets. Once again, wipe down with methylated spirits when you're finished. Apply fretboard conditioner after the cleaning. Using mother's polish again, I took all the screws and polished the heads out. 
who removed all the rust and brought a shine back to the screws. An old woodworking guy taught me once to align all the screw heads to make a better presentation. Now black ice is as slippery as it sounds. 